So good morning, everybody. Uh, being a former PhD student, IARC is wonderful to be back and see so many friends from that period. And uh, today I'll present, uh, uh, I was asked for to present uh, the Barreto's cancer experience, so I thank first Mutograph and Paul, especially for the uh, inclusion of Barreto's in this amazing uh, study. And we are very looking forward to see the end of it and, uh, and also the journey, not only the end, but the journey is being already fantastic. So I'll start uh, my presentation speaking uh, a little bit of the cancer burden in Brazil, uh, what is Barreto's Cancer Hospital and what we are doing, and then uh, our experience uh, with mutographs. So uh, as probably you already know, so cancer is a, is a major uh, uh, burden uh, in Brazil. So we have more than 600 new cases in, estimated in last year, uh, 200,000 uh, deaths, and uh, there's a, so a, grow, a growing burden. Uh, there's increased number of cases each year. Uh, the costs are rising, and despite uh, uh, being the sixth uh, world economy, has a lot of disparities and inequalities in access. So these are some of the major, uh, the top uh, cancer uh, incidents in uh, in Brazil, according to National Cancer Institute. And so prostate is leading in men and breast in female, but in Brazil we have a wide disparity. So if you go to the north part of Brazil, cervical cancer is the leading cause of death in women and in men is gastric cancer. So we are speaking generally, but there's a, a big disparity among uh, different regions of Brazil. So if the picture is not good, it will be even worse in the, first, in the next uh, 20 years. So according to Globacam, we'll have more than half uh, increase in more than 50% of the cases just based on the life expectancy, so not having account other uh, causes of cancers. And we have double amount of deaths in the next 20 years. So it's really a huge problem in Brazil. So uh, Barretos Cancer Hospital is approximately 60 years old. It was founded by Dr. Paulo Prata, uh, that is from the city of Barretos. So since beginning, it is a private, non-profit uh, foundation. So it only attend people without uh, uh, medical insurance. That means uh, in Brazil, uh, most of them, some poor people. So since beginning, the, the, uh, the, the, the key points was to do uh, taking care of patients and treat it with caring and compassion. So all medical doctors have uh, ex exclusive dedication that is not frequent in Brazil. And the original idea is to integrate clinical work with teaching and research. Teaching and research just started approximately 10 years ago, so it was a big transformation of the hospital in the last decade. So Barretos is a city, a very small city, 100,000 inhabitants. So located in the state of Sao Paulo, and it is around is 450 kilometers apart. So it's a rural area, but it attends uh, more than 10,000 new cases of cancer. So, uh, because we do a free treatment, so we attend uh, people from all over Brazil. And uh, because of that, so we started to move forward to the other regions where the patient came from. So our headquarters is in, uh, in Barreto, so we have, three, uh, we have three hospitals currently, headquarters in Barreto. We have one in Jales that is uh, uh, in, also in Sao Paulo, but already near the Mato Grosso uh, state and one new in Porto Velha in the Amazon regions. So if you combine all these three hospitals, we have uh, more than 40,000 new cases of cancers. So this is uh, our headquarters in Barretos. So uh, stressing again, so everything is completely free for the patient that is attended there. And so and our focus is more in underserved and remote populations. We don't go uh, to areas where there's already some uh, uh, availability of public system. Uh, so, and the new cancer hospital uh, that is uh, started last year, so this Amazon region, so this was under the construction, now it's completely uh, uh, finished. So it will cover an area that is approximately France, Germany, and Spain together. So there's a huge area. It's not well, a lot of populated, but it's very huge. And this is, constitutes a problem because if... Uh, 
uh, the transportation uh, is not easy in Brazil. People don't have money. So you need to be near the patient if you want to treat them well. So doing that, so we, from beginning, one of our actions was always, uh, so the best, the, our dogma was the best treatment is prevention. So we always put an emphasis in cancer prevention. So currently we have 10 cancer prevention units that are these blue dots. And until 2021, we'll have more five. Uh, the main focus is breast, cervical cancer, but also we are doing skin, colorectal, oral, and more recently, lung cancer. So we, we have more than 200,000 mammographies per year and pap smears. Um, so all these prevention cancer units, they are focused, so breast is one of the, our uh, major focus. So that he's, there's these homanized rooms where you try to, to give the best environment for the, parti the, part the women to participate and perform the exams. And also they have a small surgery room so if you can do small surgeries and you don't, you don't need to have an internation. Together with that, and because if patients, if they are poor, they cannot even move uh, to the near centers. That near center sometimes is 5,000, 1,000 kilometers. So we, we did, for a long period, uh, we have a long experience in mobile units. So currently we have 21 mobile units that are focused on uh, 15 uh, for breast, so with the mammography, but we have also oral, cervical, and recently we have a, a mobile unit for lung cancer screening. So they go really to where the patients are, with these regions. So you can see here one of the, this is a, a bus. So there's no, uh, <clears throat> sometimes electricity nor neither Wi-Fi. So you have to bring your own, you know, uh, satellite units to, to register the patients. Uh, so uh, last year we performed more than 200,000 kilometers uh, the, the trucks. So they go to wherever they are needed. So this is one in Amazon region. So these trucks, th then they, they go and they, the patients are referred to the centers, the prevention centers in that regions. And the new one of, uh, for mobile CT scanner for uh, lung cancer uh, prevention. And because of that, so we also have now our own mobile factory. So we are experienced and now we are also doing and selling to, uh, to the other uh, places, mainly in Africa, that are using now this approach. So together with that, 10 years ago, we started uh, to become more academic center, not only assistance. So we have a cancer research center. The focus is translation research. We have a core facility on genomics. Uh, for many years, we had an institutional tumor bank, so we have more than 200,000 samples from 40,000 patients. Uh, uh, recently, we have a state-of-the-art uh, animal facility, and also for the tests that are mandatory for the clinical approach, we, do, uh, we have implemented a molecular diagnostic lab with international accreditation. This center is located in Brazil, but with the new center in Amazon, we'll also have uh, a research facility that will be more focused in the indigenous population that are from this region. And uh, uh, we recently uh, performed a, a meeting in uh, Amazonia and indigenous are starting to have a Western uh, culture, a Western lifestyle, so chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and cancer starts to be also a very important uh, health issues since infectious diseases are less prevalent now. So we'll have also research focusing more in this population that is not at all explored. Another very important uh, uh, aim for ours is to bring that, what we do that at the research level to the community. So we have outreach activities and they are focused on kids because if you want to change lifestyles, you should start earlier. So we have a lot of initiatives with kids for cancer prevention. And uh, uh, the most important project is also, since we have experience with mobile units, is a truck that we go throughout the country. And the kids, they are heroes and they should fight cancer. So inside the truck, you have different stations where in each station, the, the, the kids learn what are the major etiological factors, how a mutation arrives. You also teach a little bit of science. And then they can replicate that and they can uh, uh, bring that to their family, and then usually this 
a track of education goes together with prevention tracks, so they can incentivate their parents to perform the prevention screening programs. So uh, how everything is happens, this happened in these 60 years. So uh, the government funds just cover 50% of our, of our budget, and it runs a little bit like St. Jude's, so there's a lot of philanthropy. So we are in a country region, so we have a lot of country singers, and the famous Rodeo is the biggest Rodeo in Latin America, so it's second after Houston. So one day of this Rodeo, all the, all the, all the fees goes to the hospital, and then so there's a big link to these uh, country singers community. And also, the patients, they donate and, uh, and their families. And if you go to Brazil, in many airports, you can find these piggy, pog, uh, piggy pots uh, back that can help our institution. So for many years, we, have, we are sister institution with, uh, at our pediatric hospital with St. Jude's and the adult with MD Anderson, besides several other collaborations bilateral with many institutions. So. Uh, uh, we have a master and PhD in oncology, and so it's, it covers many fields of what we do there. That, but uh, I will present some that we are doing in, on molecular and uh, uh, oncology and pathology. So, for some years we participate in international consortiums, so in TCGA, ICGC, and more recently mutographs, uh, for sporadic and also in hereditary cancer. And the TCGA, we are a tissue source. So we started later, but we contribute for seven tumor types of 300 cases. So one of our aim is also to, because you already have some data, you can just extract what is there from TCGA. Uh, concerning the ICGC, we, we, were, we perform a, a whole genome uh, sequencing analysis of 100 pair melanoma patients. Uh, so we were the only initiative in Latin America. And in collaboration with the Zdenko group here at HIARC, we also perform methylome data, and then we are uh, now publishing these results. Um, so just to have an idea, so yesterday we spoke about the UV signature, and just very, uh, so uh, Brazil melanomas was on the top mutated as expected, like the Australian and uh, uh, um, American melanoma uh, data. And we found uh, a considerable number of non-UHV signature. And this is already expected because uh, we have a lot of acro melanomas due to the African ancestry of some of our patients. And this is not associated with the view exposure. So it fits with uh, our epidemiological data. But coming uh, back and uh, to the point of this, uh, of this talk that is uh, discussing the mutograph and our experience. So overall, uh, Brazil would account for uh, 1,200 cases. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm coordinating Barretos, Luis Felipe in Inca, uh, Maria Paula uh, Curado at Asi Camargo, and Patricia Paula in uh, Hospital das Clinicas. So our four institutions, they have different patients' profile, but even so, you can see that we are missing all these heterogeneity that you are in the north. So, so even Brazil, we are just doing a subset of our, the huge disparity of patients. This project was, uh, is being coordinated at the uh, uh, national level by Ana Paula Curado. And uh, uh, in Brazil, we have uh, some uh, bureaucratic issues, so the projects have to be approved in the local r and now and then have to be approved in the national level. So Maria, Maria Paula uh, was leading this national level and it took one year, more than one year, just to have approval to start the project in all four centers. And at Barretos, so our commitment was to uh, profile or to collect 250 cases, 100 colorectal, renal cell carcinoma, and because our population is poor patients, uh, mainly of them so associated with alcohol and tobacco, we almost don't have a denosquamous, uh, uh, denocarcinomas, idiophagial denocarcinomas. Most of them are squamous subtype. Uh, this is the team. So uh, these so this, uh, persons, medical doctor from the endoscopy, urology, lower digestive tract surgeons and upper digestive tract, the pathology, 
uh, biobank researcher, and we have also a team of assistant nurses, most of them, and Gisleine has been the person that is putting everybody together. So before the project, uh, we did a thorough uh, analysis of the project, of the details, and then each month we have uh, a meeting to see what is the evolution, the, uh, how it is going, the project, if something, the numbers that are inclusion, if you need to increase or not. So to have a, just an overview, so uh, until now, so we, we did the pilot of 50 cases that they already sent and here to IARC, so we are looking for the data from Sanger, so, and feedback if the quality is good or not. This is really important, the feedback. I think it's something that for us, uh, uh, tissue source, we need really a lot that feedback because you do, uh, there's a, lot, a big team that is involved. We're trying to do our best, but sometimes there's some lack, so that feedback will be really crucial for us. So these assistant nurses, so we go to the first consultation and, and surgical schedule, so on morning we know what will be the next uh, week or two weeks surgeries and procedures. So uh, we are in these four departments, so we take care that any potential eligible patient is included. So if it is eligible, we perform the consent form. If it's approved, we collect blood immediately and then the questionnaire, and then it goes to or to endoscopy, to do a biopsy, or to the surgery. Uh, the blood comes to the biobank. Uh, after the surgery, it goes to the pathologist to see the quality controls. If everything is okay, if it is illegible, then it also goes to biobank, and then and the idea is to ship it here and then to do the analysis. Uh, our data, so, so far, so we screened uh, 100 from June, so one year that we are running the project, so we screen. 142 patients, so we had two, four refusals, that is along what we expect, around 5% of the cases. That, so we have inclusion of 138. Uh, many of these inclusions then, uh, we have to exclude 23. You will see most of them are from uh, renal cell carcinoma because they are benign lesions, are not from neurological department, and is eligible, so 113, and so these are the numbers that we collected so far. Uh, and we are expecting to ship more 75 cases this October. So, uh, so here are some of details of uh, colorectal. We, most of them are surgical, but also some biopsies, squamous. Most of the patients that we attend, because many of them came from other states, they're very advanced stage, so it's a palliative care. So we just do the biopsy and then radiotherapy or chemotherapy, so we don't do surgery. And renal cell carcinoma was uh, surgery. So most of the exclusion was from this department, so because of benign lesion. So we have some ideas to overcome this problem and fulfill the numbers that initially was expected. And so we estimate in this, in this rhythm to have 50 Ks every six months and expect to end the collection in December 2020. Probably earlier, but this is our more safe, period, safe time. So in order to overcome the problem that we face in our hospital, so one of our second uh, satellite hospital is located in Jales, it is 250 kilometers, and we are starting, we already put in place a biobank there, because for the moment biobank is just a tower, uh, tower headquarters. So we're starting a biobank in September, so we also collect uh, start with renal cell carcinoma, but if the other comes short, we also increase those numbers. So at least to have these 250. So this is the overall um, uh, idea where is Barretas and where we are in the, in the prog program. Uh, I'd like to finalize to acknowledge uh, the uh, funding institutions in Brazil that help us uh, in putting many of the projects or the ideas that I showed you. Uh, it's for us uh, a great uh, pride to be uh, a part of uh, the, this uh, grand challenge uh, uh, opportunity. And I'd like to acknowledge all the team at Barretos that uh, transformed in the last decade uh, our uh, policy. Uh, you can see here this, our, this is the, the current CEO, is the son of the of the, of the founder, he's a farmer, so he's really a cowboy, so he, he goes usually like that to the hospital, but he's managing and he's putting uh, Barretos in a, 
in the, in, in the uh, worldwide level. So this is all the group that were contributed to, to, uh, to Barretos Cancer Hospital. And I'd like to pass a special thanks to André Lopez Carvalho, that uh, uh, he was our former scientific director, now he's uh, here at IARC, he's there. So he's one of who was responsible to transform Barretos in an assistant center to academic center. So thank you, André, and thank you everybody for your attention.